Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to discuss running Windows applications in Linux using the Wine compatibility layer and related software. Before we begin, please note that this is one of two ways to run Windows applications in Linux, with the other being to set up a Windows virtual machine. I've covered this in other videos, and using a virtual machine generally offers a reliable solution for running the majority of Windows applications. However, a virtual machine can be time-consuming to set up, may require the allocation of significant CPU, RAM and other resources, and needs a Windows license if you want it to be activated. In contrast, Wine has a lower resource overhead and so may be a better option for running Windows programs on lower specification hardware that may struggle to run two operating systems at the same time. In addition, a Wine solution may be quicker to set up to run certain applications. However, this is by no means always the case, as getting a program to run using Wine can take considerable configuration. What's more, the latest versions of many major Windows applications are either not installable or not usable under Wine. And so, Wine therefore needs to be viewed as a tool whose usefulness depends on the specific Windows applications you need to run. Right, here we are on the Wine website at WineHQ. Dot org, where, as it notes, Wine once stood for Wine is not an emulator. And Wine actually is a compatibility layer capable of running Windows applications on several compliant operating systems, including Linux. In some Linux distros, Wine and related helper applications are pre-installed. However, here we're working in Linux Mint, Hello, and as in most distros, we need to install Wine either by downloading it directly from its website or by using our distro's software manager. And as with most Linux software, both of these approaches do have their advantages with a website download providing the latest version, whilst a software manager install is likely to offer an older version if one that may be more stable on your particular system and which is likely to be easier to install. To help us decide, over in Wine's FAQ, it notes that a good rule of thumb is to start with a version of Wine installed with your distro and see if that works with the applications you want to use. If it does, good, and if it doesn't, upgrade. And so here, if we download Wine from the website, we will get version 10.0 if we go for the latest stable release. But taking the FAQ advice, what we're actually going to do is to install via our software manager. So let's run that up over here like that, and we will search for Wine. There we go, various things come up, including various helper programs we'll look at later in the video, but we've got two entries here just for Wine. This one will install version 503, that's clearly significantly out of date, but this one will install version 9.0, specifically repackaged for Debian-based systems such as Ubuntu and Linux Mint. And so this is what we're going to install. So we will click on Install, and it'll tell us what's going to happen. We'll click on Continue, and it'll ask for our password. And Wine will now be downloaded and installed. And as this happens, we'll use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And there we are. We now have Wine on this system. Although note, there's no point in clicking on Launch, as no graphical user interface is included. And indeed, reflecting this, if we look down to the menu and scroll through all applications, we can see that nothing called Wine is included in the applications list. But fear not, if we launch a terminal like that and we type in Wine, yes, we can see it clearly on our system and we'll expand the terminal a little bit to make it look a bit neater. There we go. And if we type as it says Wine version like that, we should see, yes, Wine 9.0 has been installed. And if we now enter Wine CFG for Wine configuration and enter, it'll set everything up and run up a graphical configuration tool. And despite the fact we've got some errors on the screen, everything seems to be working. And here in the control panel, we can leave everything on their default settings. But I just wanted to show you, we can choose the version of Windows that Wine will provide compatibility layer for. We can control libraries, graphic setup, 
desktop integration, audio, and also drives, where we can see here that Wine has created a virtual C drive where Windows programs will be installed, and it's also mapped a drive Z on this system. And if you're wondering where our virtual C drive is, that's a rather good thing to wonder, so let's just close that down like that and go to our file manager where the Wine C drive is actually in our home folder, but it's in a hidden directory. So we'll go to the view and show hidden files like that. And if we now scroll down, we'll see all the hidden files, the ones starting with a dot. There is Wine, we'll go into that. And there is our drive C. And oh look, we've got some rather familiar folders into which Windows applications will be installed and where we can also place files to be accessed by Windows programs running under Wine. Right, shall we run some Windows applications? And we can do this graphically or in a terminal. And to start with the latter, here I've navigated to a folder that contains the portable Windows executable for Angry IP Scanner. This can be run in Windows without any installation, so it's useful for a simple test. And to run it in the terminal, all we have to do is to type Wine and then IP and we'll tap to complete and enter. And there we are running the Windows version of Angry IP Scanner. However, I'm sure many of you don't want to mess around in a terminal, so let's get rid of that and navigate to the same folder where we'll execute the file graphically. So I will right click and exactly what we see here will depend on precisely how Wine was and is installed in your distro. And here, as we can see, there's no immediate option to run the exe file using Wine. But sometimes such an option does exist, so providing a rapid means of executing the Windows code. However, if as here this menu option is not available, we're going to select Open with Other Application, and we could scroll the applications here, but again, we won't find Wine on the list. And so what I'm going to do is to select a custom executable. We'll click on the end like that, and then go back to the root, and then find User, which is obviously alphabetically down at the bottom. There we are, and then we'll go to bin, and then somewhere in this folder we will find wine. Let's scroll down, obviously. The alphabet's a wonderful thing for finding things, isn't it? There we are, all the way down to the bottom, and somewhere, there it is. There is wine, which we will select like that. And I'm also going to click to set this as default, so we don't have to set it up again. So now we'll just click on OK. And once again, the Windows version of Angry IP Scanner has happily appeared. Now, whilst you may have some standalone Windows executables you want to run, as we've just done here, it's likely you'll want to install Windows software. And to demonstrate this, I've got here the ISO file for Office XP Pro from 2001, or in other words, a copy of my CD of this old, but still perfectly usable, Windows software. So let's right-click to mount the ISO, like that, and it'll appear as a drive down there. And if we now go to Setup Pro XE and just double click, because we've just set Wine as the default to run Windows XE files, it launches the installer. So I'll just put in my details, including the product key from the real CD, and we can now follow through the installer in the normal way. And we'll stick with the default with Office XP to be installed in our virtual C drive. Now, we do get a few errors. These seem to be related to speech recognition or speech synthesis or something like that, but they don't seem to matter. We just go through those and installation will now complete. There we are, we can click on OK and I think also minimize this file explorer window. And if we now go down to the menu, hey presto, we've got an entry for Wine because we've installed applications using Wine and here are all the different parts of Microsoft Office. Let's try launching Microsoft Word. There we are, it is working, that's not bad, is it? Have we got anything else? Let's try a few others, let's try Excel. Where's Excel gone? We're back to using letters to navigate, aren't we? Here's Excel, needs a bit of a scale factor apply, but it clearly is working. We've got also PowerPoint as well, and yes, it's working. And indeed, I can report that like many old Windows programs, these core parts of Office XP are usable, if not always entirely stable, under Wine although personally, I always still run them in a Windows XP virtual machine. 
just to demonstrate another install. Let's first of all get rid of these. Let's close that down. We'll also close down Excel. I think let's be tidy and we will close down Word. Goodbye Word, goodbye Christopher. We will go back to the file manager. We're in home, as you might have noticed previously in Windows software. I've also got the ISO for Adobe Audition 1.5, an old but still useful piece of Adobe software. And again, if we mount this and go to the drive and go here to Adobe Audition, we've now got the file set up XE, which we can run with Wine. Here we go, and I'll rapidly go through the installer. And there we are, we've installed Adobe Audition. And as you might have noticed, a couple of icons have appeared on the desktop. One is a Windows shortcut file, a LNK file, a link file. We can just get rid of this if we just select and press delete. But we also have an icon for running Adobe Audition. And also down in the menu, of course, under Wine, we will also have Adobe Audition there. But as we've got an icon on the desktop, let's use that. Run up Adobe Audition. Here it goes. And it's loaded its first run session. Although I'm afraid the audio output does not work properly. And to demonstrate this, I'll give us a quick listen. That's not ideal, is it? And I know there are configuration settings both here in Adobe Audition and also in Wine as we saw earlier, although I've not managed to use these to get things working perfectly. And indeed, the story with Wine is that for mainstream productivity software of any complexity, and in particular audiovisual software, Wine does have its limitations. Having noted that not all Windows programs work or work properly under Wine, there are several helpers whose goal is to simplify configuration and make life easier. The first of these is Wine Tricks, which provides a menu of supported applications as well as allowing the installation of missing DLL files and the tweaking of Wine settings. Next, Crossover is a commercial product that's based on Wine and similarly provides a graphical installation interface, along with compatibility patches and configuration tools. Thirdly, and still just about worthy of note, is Play on Linux which again provides a graphical installer for games and other applications. Although do note that Play on Linux is no longer maintained with the last release in 2020. Fourthly, as I've got installed here in Zorin OS, Bottles offers a graphical interface with a focus on providing distinct environments or what Wine calls prefixes for different applications. And this allows settings to be individually configured for each piece of Windows software. Back on my Linux Mint test rig, Lutris describes itself as a video game preservation platform and uses Wine as its runner to play Windows games. Finally, Proton is a Windows compatibility layer developed by Valve for their Steam gaming platform. Integrated with Steam Play, Proton is based on a fork of Wine and allows most Windows games to be played on Linux. Detailing the use of each of these programs is beyond the scope of this video. And if you're a gamer, to use Proton, you just need to install Steam and enable Steam Play. But if you're not a gamer, working through the use of the other helpers here is not going to advance things for many users. And this is because whilst Wine and its helpers do provide the ability to run the majority of Windows games, many utilities and other older software, they do not allow us to run the latest versions of Microsoft Office, the Adobe Suite, Affinity Photo, AutoCAD, and other major Windows applications. To prove the point, Wine and its helpers provide databases and menus to indicate compatible Windows applications. So, for example, if we return to the Wine HQ website and go to the application database and scroll down, we can see the top 10 platinum list of applications which install and run flawlessly out of the box using Wine. And as we can see, we've got Game, Game, Adobe Flash Animate CS6, that's pretty old, another Game, version 3.5 of the Microsoft.NET framework, that's from 2007, and then a few more Games, and then, oh look, an even older version of .NET and another Game. And then if we go down to the top 10 gold list, we've again got games, nothing wrong with games of course, but this is making it pretty clear that the dominant use of Wine is not to run productivity software. 
And indeed, this continues down into the silver list, as we can see. We have got Adobe Photoshop CS6 there, which is good to see. Again, fairly old software though. And again, we continue with games to the bottom of this list until we get to the installer for Microsoft Office 2019. Talking of which, let's bring up Crossover, the commercial package for running Windows applications that's based on Wine. And as you might have noticed earlier, we have Microsoft Office 2016 listed in stores but will not run, and the same for Microsoft Office 365. And indeed, if we enter into the box Microsoft Office like that, we can see the versions that come up. We've got 2003 runs great, 2007 runs great, 2002 is, is running well. We're back to the point about running older productivity applications, but as we've just seen, 2016 and Office 365 install, but will not run. If we go up here and do another search, for example, for Photoshop like that, we can see that Photoshop Creative Cloud 2019 has got limited functionality. We've got running better for CS2, effectively CS1, CS5, but again, these are older applications. And if we search for an alternative, Affinity Photo, for example, clearly isn't there. And let's also search for AutoCAD, people often want that. And again, we've got will not install unlimited functionality and only for older versions. Now, before we get too despondent, we must remember that Wine and related software do now allow most Windows games to be run on Linux, as well as many utilities and older Windows packages. And if we return to the search box here in Crossover and enter Microsoft Word rather than Microsoft Office, we do see here more reasonable results. For example, Microsoft Word 2016 is reported as running well. Word 2000, so the middle 25 years old, is running great. And Microsoft Word 365 runs well. It's clearly other parts of Microsoft Office which are giving problems. And so, as I said right at the start of the video, if you're looking at Wine and related software, the critical thing to think about is exactly what software you want to run. In this video, I've tried to present a balanced view of Wine and related applications. On the positive side, they do now allow us to run the majority of Windows games in Linux, as well as to use a lot of utilities and older Windows programs. But when it comes to major Windows productivity applications, it's a very different story. And if you want to run that type of Windows software, I still strongly recommend a virtual machine. But what is your experience? Has Wine helped you to transition to Linux, or do you favour the virtual machine approach? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.